The bombshell divorce of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes has put Scientology back in the spotlight, with many people wondering what marriage is truly like inside the famously secretive church. Tonight, the story of a Southern California couple who met, fell in love, and married in the Church of Scientology. Tanya and Stefan Castle were high-ranking insiders devoting their lives to the church. But Tanya says she was pressured to divorce Stefan and never speak to him again. Pressure, she said, was so intense she felt trapped and took extraordinary steps to leave the church and its international headquarters near Hemet in the dead of night. But I knew there were cameras all around the, the wall. I came up with the plan of how to get around. It was a little bit surreal. I took the ladder to the wall. I see my heart was pounding. Okay, just go. I kind of just took a deep breath and jumped. The lights all went on. August 2006, Tanya Castle's final frantic exit from Scientology. I could see headlights, um, so I just knew I just had to run straight for that. Tanya Castle grew up in Scientology and joined the Sea Org, Scientology's elite religious order, where she met and married her husband, Stefan. When I went into this sort of, into the Sea Organization, I knew I was making sacrifices and I was, I was happy to do so. She spent 13 years working as executive secretary to top church leader David Miscavige. To the most dedicated Scientologist I know. David Miscavige, best friend and best man to actor Tom Cruise. Miscavige is known to be a volatile, demanding leader. Over time, Stefan says he fell out of favor with David Miscavige. It just basically came down to Tanya was more his secretary than she was my wife, um, you know, by miles. Tanya Castle says over the years she was pressured by church officials to disconnect from Stefan and end their marriage. Why that had to be destroyed, you don't have to destroy people's marriages. Disconnection is the term the church uses to describe how some Scientologists cut off communication with family members or friends who choose to leave the church. The church told us in a statement that disconnection is a self-determined decision and voluntary. Just relentlessly and for years and years I was being told what a bad person he was and how suppressive and how evil. In 1999, Stefan was assigned to the RPF, Scientology's Rehabilitation Project Force, for alleged financial misconduct and violations of the church's moral code, a charge he strongly denies. He was in for nearly four years. Three years, nine months. The church calls the RPF a voluntary program of religious retreat and rehabilitation and says Stefan agreed in writing to participate. But critics and some former Scientologists say the RPF is a punishment program and have compared it to a labor camp. Work carried on overnight, and on several occasions I was up for about five days straight. Well, first discouraged and then not allowed to communicate with each other or see each other or, uh, you know, be a married couple. Tanya Castle says the still married couple defied those orders, staying in touch by cell phone. But Tanya says when David Miscavige found out in the summer of 2004, she was demoted. Their cell phones were taken away, and Tanya was sent to live in near isolation in a remote corner of Scientology's sprawling international base near Hemet. Somebody was watching me uh, all the time, and I'd get my meals brought to me by a security guard. The church denies this, telling us in a statement that Tanya, quote, lived in an apartment in town or a house rented or owned by the church on a public street and traveled to and from work every day. I was doing sort of some m manual labor during the day. Eyewitness News spoke with four former church members who all tell us they saw Tanya Castle living in an old trailer in the old Gilman House area of the base between 2004 and 2006. In the fall of 2004, Tanya Castle says she couldn't take it anymore. She jumped the fence surrounding the Scientology base. There's the razor barrier it was along the top, but I managed to somehow get over without hurting myself too much. I, I walked down Highway 79, um, one of the security guards saw me. Tanya says that security guard alerted Scientology executives, two of whom, she says, followed her down the highway in a van. She grabbed my arm. I just started sort of shouting and telling them to leave me alone. But Tanya says the Scientology executives eventually convinced her to get in the van and return to the church. I really was concerned about get, getting into a situation where um, they would try to take me back. The church says any allegation that Tanya was followed is a lie. One month later, Stefan left the church. And then they wanted to put me back on the RPF. And it was sort of a, 
one of those moments. After Stefan left, the church offered him this $25,000 check. In return, Stefan had to sign a lengthy contract that prohibited him from ever contacting anyone in Scientology again. Stefan assumed that would include his wife, Tanya. There's something here, like why do they want to give me $25,000? I, I took the check, I, I signed the document, we did it on video. Stefan took that check and the contract straight to an attorney. And he said, well look, this is actually illegal. They have your wife. Stefan returned the check and canceled the contract, hoping to reunite with Tanya. But Tanya, still in semi-isolation, says the pressure to disconnect and ultimately divorce intensified. Somebody sat down with me and, and basically sort of worked me over until I was feeling like I had no option other than to sign divorce papers. So he's a suppressive person. You just need to write a letter of disconnection. Tanya finally did write that letter of disconnection. And in early 2005, the couple divorced. This is it's like overnight. Your chest is very cold and it's like a void. A year passed. Tanya worked her way out of isolation on the base. Stefan still hoped to reconcile with Tanya. So he smuggled a cell phone into the base in a package he believed no one else would open. Some, some co-worker just said to me, oh, you know, there's a box for you, a uh, Victoria's Secret box for you in the mailroom. And I was like, hmm, that's odd. And I found right away, I found the, the letter and the phone and uh, it kind of confirmed that, you know, he was still there. Um, trying to get a hold of me. Even if you don't come now, I'll always love you. But Tanya did want to leave. In the summer of 2006, they hatched a plan for Tanya to scale the fence again. But this time, Stefan would be waiting on the other side. As soon as he said, okay, now, um, I took the ladder to the wall. There was actually about that much of this barbed wire, stuff, security wire. I kind of just took a deep breath and jumped. All the floodlights went on all, all around. I said, okay, I'm on the other side. I see you, I'm coming. And I started running that way. I pulled up in a car on the highway. She came, got in the car. I mean, obviously that we were very, it's all very overjoyed new. that we were back together. Mm -hmm. This really happened. Was that seven years that we were kept apart? That's crazy, you know? It's been six years now since that fateful night. Tanya and Stefan are living here in the L.A. area. They're running their own business, happy, healthy, and expecting their first child, a baby girl, that's actually overdue. We uh, talked with Tanya this afternoon, and they are still waiting.